In this video, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about GCSE physics, whether you're a parent or a student, what makes it hard, what obstacles you're going to have to overcome to make sure you're a success for your GCSE physics or the physics part of combined science. <laughs> Firstly, physics is hard. There's no way around it. Physics is a big challenge. Luckily, it's also massively fascinating. You just need to get over a few hurdles at first that are gonna make physics seem really quite confusing until you get the skills. First hurdle for most people is understanding calculations and not being put off by the maths element of physics. There is a very strong maths element in physics. Physics is not maths, it's not the same thing, but we use a lot of maths in physics to help us solve problems. More maths than they do in maybe biology and chemistry. So with the maths element, the first thing to get ahead around is equations. Take this one. Force is mass times acceleration. And don't be put off by the algebra. It's just a, sh a quicker way of writing. Force is mass times acceleration. Yes, they can make calculation questions hard by not telling them the equation. So they do need to memorize a whole list of equations. Loads of ways to do that. They can do it by look, cover, repeat, like me memorizing spellings or can do them in lots of creative ways. Lots of kids like to make posters and put them up around their rooms and things like that. But I think the best way to memorize equations is to use them. So I've written a book called Memorize Equations for GCSE Physics, um, and you can order it from Amazon or you can get a free copy from Smashwords. What they have in there is just three questions for each equation that you can do in your head and do repeatedly because it's a pocket-sized book in short amounts of time. So I would vastly recommend that. How can they make these questions harder? Firstly, they can, I'll say, not give you the equation. So memorizing these equations is massively important. Secondly, they could give you the mass and the acceleration, but give them in the wrong units. So students need to learn how to convert into kilograms or into meters per second squared. For example, they need to know how to convert from one type of unit to another type of unit. Secondly, they could ask you to calculate not the force, but ask you to calculate the acceleration. So that would require rearranging to something like this. Acceleration is force divided by mass. We've just done the inverse operation to times mass to divide by mass. So that's pretty tricky stuff, and that's a vastly important skill to be successful in GCSE physics. You are not going to be successful in GCSE physics if you don't know how to use those equations to do calculations. The next thing I want to talk about is decoding the exam question. Now, most kids in most subjects have trouble really accessing the exam question from the start because they're not skilled in decoding the exam question. You don't read an exam question. You try and work out what it's asking you to do. You decode it. You take it from this code that they've written with lots of clues and lots of information into something that the kid kind of understands. And there's two command words I want to focus on, and these are the most common ones. This is the difference between describe and explain. It's really obvious to me when I mark GCC physics papers that kids do or don't get the use of the command words. So describe means say what it is like. Explain means say why it is like it is. And so many students do one or the other interchangeably rather than think, oh, this is a describe question, so I just need to put down the detail of what it is like. This is an explain question, so I don't need to spend a lot of time telling you what it's like. I need to say why it is like it is. I need to give reasons for it being like it is. So if I were to do um, a couple of graphs, and actually graph skills are a vastly important thing, and using maths to also write answers is a vastly important skill in GCSE physics as well. So if I was to take a graph for an ohmic conductor, it would look like this. Now describing that would be to say that it is a straight line through the origin, or I could say it's directly proportional. So to describe that graph, it would be to state what the trend is like. If I was to describe this graph, this is a non-ohmic conductor, this is a filament bulb, then what I would say is it is a line with a decreasing gradient, so it's getting less steep as it's going on. That describes the shape of the graph, but it doesn't explain it. Explaining those two shapes is going in a little bit more detail. So this ohmic conductor is a straight line through the origin because ohmic conductors have fixed resistances. In other words, their resistance doesn't change. And the resistance is one over the gradient. It's the reciprocal of the gradient of these graphs. This filament bulb, the resistance does change. So this graph is this shape because the resistance changes. The resistance actually gets higher as the current increases. So that explains the shape of the graph. So the difference between describe and explain, knowing your command words is crucial for success in any GCSE. 
So how can my channel help? Well, this is Gorilla Physics, and I really massively care about helping out young people achieve the success that I know they can do with that little bit of dedication, that little bit of commitment, and the hard work they're going to put in. So I take a lot of time to explain good exam technique and give a lot of study tips on exactly how you should be working to revise and what benefits you can get by revising in certain ways. And I also make tutorials for all aspects of GCSE and A-level physics. So do subscribe, do send your young people, uh, do send your friends, other kids to my channel because I can help you massively with your physics lessons. <laughs> So the last thing I want to talk about, about how you can help your young person or how you can better prepare for these exams is to use a technique to approach every single exam question in the same way. So the way I want you to approach exam questions is to decode them, then to plan your answer, then to answer them, and then to check your answer. Now that sounds a bit strange and most people go straight to the answer step. And before they've even thought about what they're writing, they've already filled up half of the answer box. So to decode a question, you don't read it, you look out for the command words and you look out for the clues about what you should be writing about. You look out for the things that you can add value to, so the information they've given to you, and think, how can I use that? When you're planning your answer, this is when you actually do your thinking. Now, even if it's a short answer, you don't want to write a plan. You're not going to write an essay plan for something worth two marks, maybe. But just pause and think, and think in your mind what you're going to actually write down before you put pen to paper. Because I promise you, we read a lot of people who are thinking as they write, and it leads to not very coherent answers, and it leads to lots and lots and lots of superfluous information, information that wasn't needed, that isn't in the mask scheme, that doesn't get you any points. So please pause and think, well, what on earth am I going to write before I, I put anything down to paper? Once you've planned it, then you do the mechanical, you actually write your answer, you actually put the numbers into the calculator, you actually do your working out and you put the answer in the answer box, that type of thing. You actually do the answering and hopefully in that point, because you've had the time to th uh, think about it as you're writing, you think, oh, it's better if I use that word or it's better if I use this or, ah, I need to make sure I convert into kilograms before I do my calculation. And lastly, you check. And checking is a really important skill and it comes with lots and lots of practice and you get better at it the more you see mark schemes, the more you see model answers. You're looking out for the things that you are getting used to, that you know are in mark schemes, that you know examiners are checking for. When you check your answer, check back using the question and hopefully you've done your decoding step correctly and you've actually underlined all the command words and you've highlighted all the clues and you've actually thought about what information is given to you in the question to tell you what type of answer and what type of response you should be given. Checking back using the question will make you much more skilled and make sure you don't leave anything out. We mark a lot of half complete answers. People have done only half of what they're told to do. And remember an exam question is not really a question, there's no question mark. It's actually an instruction. It's an exam instruction. They've given you command words. I really hope that helped. Do come over to Gorilla Physics. This video is about understanding what you're going to find difficult in GCSE Physics or the physics part of combined science. You can do this. I believe in you. My name's Kit. I'm here on Gorilla Physics to help you young people learn your physics and find the real interest so you can actually do as well as you possibly can in that GCSE Physics. Thanks a lot for watching.